Okay, welcome everybody for another CTC software webinar. Today we're going to be continuing our series on Earthwork Processor. This is the last of three. If you were at our previous two, thank you. And if you weren't, you can get those on our YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about surface creation and profiles. My name is Tony Crick. I'm the Civil Product Manager here at CTC Software. Okay, Earthwork Processor, it's part of our, one of our grading tool, tools along with AutoGrader, and it is part of the SIM project suite of tools intended for everyday Civil 3D users and those creating design and production drawings. It works in the last four versions of Civil 3D back to version 2020. As we go along here, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the question panel. And if we can get to them during the broadcast, we will. Otherwise, we'll get to them at the end. So Earthwork Processor, as I said, it's part of the grading tool set in our SIM project suite of tools. And so why is it, why did we create it? It's easier than the native tools. It does most of the same things. We can create variable subgrade depths all at once, and we'll easily update when things are changed. We can create labels and or tables simultaneously. Today, we're gonna to be putting some labels on to show you how that works. It calculates the subgrade by regions using polylines, feature lines, and figures. We can include topsoil as well, and it creates civil 3D surfaces that are not proprietary. It's exactly as you would do it uh, natively, except for it does, we can do multiple surfaces at once and compare them with uh, one push of the button, basically. And we can also save our templates for repetitive sites, typically for small commercial sites and or land developments is where we see those being used. So we design, the first things we need to do, how do we do it? We define our sets for our earthwork volumes. Then we select from proposed and existing surfaces so that those are two things we need in our drawing. And then we will create a dynamic civil 3D surfaces, which we're gonna get to today. And again, we can save those for repetitive sites for typical use. So with that, let's jump into a drawing here and show you how it works. Okay, so here we have our typical site. This is, uh, if you saw our other videos, it's consistent. The same uh, site that we used on the other two with a few additions to it. Now I've added a couple of alignments here and created profiles off of those alignments. So again, like I said, and we covered this before, but we use everything that's available in Civil 3D. So nothing proprietary, proprietary, sorry. Um, create stuff right here. So we'll see these, we'll come back to these, we'll see these, how they get populated. And anything you can do here will happen here and vice versa. So you see we have the, the existing ground, finished ground. That's what we need to start with. In our previous videos, we created our regions. We used our offset region, earthwork regions to create those. And today we're going to create the surfaces. We're gonna add them to the profiles. We're gonna show you how the surface shading works 
and the labeling. So let's go ahead and open the earthwork processor here. Calculate the earthworks. Take a second while it opens up here. So I've gone ahead and we did this in our last webinar. We showed how these get created. I'm gonna breeze through this real quick, but we did it through filtering. You can also do it through selecting. And that's just coming right from our layering. And these get populated here. We can set how we want them to go. So we use object layers. That's how we did that. And our surface creation, that's right here. We talked about this shading right here. This was set up. It comes blank. You have to set this up however you wish to do it. We showed how these values get entered. And we'll go ahead and we'll put some shading surfaces on. Pulls your style right from your Civil 3D right there. And this is the how you can change them. If you have multiple sites, you can shade them differently, not at all. Whatever you choose, we can shade to show our subgrade, our earthwork, our stripping, our stripping earthwork. And our, our labels too. We're going to create labels. And I didn't put my new style in this drawing. That's okay, we'll do it in the other drawing. Anyway, I've got two drawings I wanna show you. We talked about what goes into the labeling. That's here. From selections, you choose here by double clicking on that. Ellipsis, same with the tables. We, ex we exported the table in previous webinars, so we're not gonna do that, but same settings. And the table draws right from the table styles of your annotation up there. So with that, Let's go ahead and just run this set. So now we see that <clears throat> we selected all these regions right here. So we can hit run. Let me exit here again. Well, we already showed that. I'm just gonna run it to get our volumes. So here's our volumes right here. So we have our cut, our fill. We have our total turned on. You can turn that off can control that right here if you have multiples otherwise it's going to just match if you have just one I'm going to just turn it back on and so we have the the surfaces are created now so what do they look like as you can see over here in our 3d ortho view here you can see our surfaces from our profiles showing up in our 3D view. So you see those lines, how they go there. And you'll be able to see once we add our surface profiles, where they where they enter. If I could point with my finger, I would, so I don't have to keep grabbing that, but you'll see where they change going across the surface. So let's come back over here and let's take a look at what um, Earthwork Processor did. And we told it to create the folder so it tucks everything into this folder right here so the surface we created were the, the earthwork volume surface and a regular subgrade surface for this particular one so if we go ahead and we put that surface on here so we're going to add this one add it to that by default my uh, surface style is set to subgrade. So I can just select OK. And now we see it showed up in our profile so we can see what it's doing. So we see that it cuts across. Right here, we have nothing where the turf is. We show the depth right here at our heavy pavement changes under our sidewalk here again and here and then it ends out here at our turf and then into the pond so that's where our volumes get calculated from it works by 
creating temporary surface to compare our volume surfaces, and that spits out the numbers like you would do natively. So let's go ahead and add the surface also to this profile. Oops, I have two. So same thing. Subgrade, I'm going to add it again. Subgrade, select OK. And now we said that um, things change easily or update easily when things are changed. So we'll go back to Earthwork Processor right here. And we'll go ahead and we'll change some depths here to see what that looks like. So again, how these volumes, these are relative to your volume or to your surface. So we want a subcut on the heavy pavement of two feet. To be dramatic, I'm going to change that to three. And this will change the polyline elevation. I'll show you that in a second here. So let's go ahead and we'll change that one to two, just so it shows up. Maybe we'll go a foot here. We don't need a subcut for our turf, typically. We just want to strip that. So you notice when I change these, they run out of date. So something changed here. It knows we need to run that again. So let's go ahead and run it. So then it does its calculations, and it's just simple Excel type formulas. Your cut minus your fill gets your net volume. Okay, for each region, and then our totals, so they should match, and they do. So I'm going to pull this off screen, and I'm going to close it. And you should see you see how things change right here, and there the you see that the changes happened right there. So it's following your subgrades, following your existing ground right there. And it did it in both profiles because they're attached. So it's everything's dynamic, dynamically linked so we can see what's happening. Let's open up Earthwork Process again and add the stripping on there. Okay, so now we can come back and I'm going to change these back to so we see two. We'll just call that two, and we'll say this one. Oh, well, I, let me show you that first. Let me close that real quick and show you how we can change. In fact, we'll change it here instead. So, what it does is it changes the elevation of our region lines, our polylines. So, we can control it here or we can control it in earthwork processor. So you see it's three right here. So let's change that to two. I'll make it 2.25. And then we'll change this one. We'll make this 18 inches, 1.75. Let's go down and change our sidewalk. We'll make that a foot, I think we said. So same thing here. There's a foot, we'll leave it at, you know what, I'll change it back to eight inches. Okay, so we've set those there. Now nothing's happened because we haven't run it, of course. So let's go back to Earthwork Processor and everything will be out of date, as mentioned before. And it's out of date. So we let's add the stripping in here now. 
oops and like we highlighted before if you have typical things you want to do for your stripping and other settings your cut fill factors you can set those in your options to do it every time now i'm going to give the stripping uh, for the turf 0.5 not 5.5 so we're going to leave the subgraders at zero so we can get a stripping volume just a stripping volume off of our turf areas so now that we've got those set i'm going to I'm going to pop on these labels. So I'm going to do this one and then in the next drawing, we'll do them individual regions. But what this one is going to do is this one's going to drop a label that's going to reflect the totals and it's going to be the centroid of the entire set. So let me run that. And it's going to be that ugly table that we showed in the previous one or text. I mean, M text, it's just M text. And that comes from your settings here, where whatever you have in here. Oops, not your layer, sorry. Your styles right here. It's going to come from there. That's where that's drawing. So I can actually, I, let's change it and see what, see what it looks like. Because it's all, everything's all civil 3D again. Nothing changes. That doesn't look too bad. And so it lands in the center. This is your totals. We created that table last time. I have taken it off of here. <clears throat> but we can drop it into the table as well. So now we come down here. We see that this has changed again. And these are following our finished ground surface again. So what it does is it goes out and it temporarily creates a surface from your surface and it creates break lines that cause these to happen. So if you were to go look in the surface, you would see in your analyzation or your surface, you would see a series of break lines. So in our definition, we're gonna see break lines and our break line set. So that's where they get created right there to create our surfaces. And you can control these two however however you want. If you want to change some of those, you can. You can zoom to where those are and change those from there as well. So let's go back and let's add those stripping, stripping surface to our profile so we can see what that looks like. So now it's added it right here. And change that style to stripping. I have stripping style. And these are right out of your, however you have your surface styles created. So this is our stripping surface right here. You can see that set one stripping. Again, this right here. And we'll add it also to this one. So we see what's happening here. It's running right along the whole entire, every region. We're getting our half foot grade until we get to the end of our grading where our turf ends and our pond begins. And it's stripping that all off. And that's where our volume is coming from. So let me add it to the east-west one. And we'll go back and we'll open that up real quick and I'll show you how that volume gets calculated again just coming straight formulas basic excel formulas it's a little more complicated than that the developers had to do a little more than that but that's the basics to it so if we open it up here always jumps on my other screen so I have to drag it back I apologize so what we're doing here is we're taking our cut we're subtracting our stripping again we talked about this assuming that stays on site we're subtracting our fill to get our net volume right here that's the same for every region <clears throat>
So that's all I wanted to show you on that one. Let's jump to this other site, site two, we're calling it. So I've gone ahead and already created um, the alignments and I've done uh, um, to show how we can use this to also grade for a building pad if we wanted to. So you see right here, that's the building labeled building subgrade. And I will mention that all of this surface was created first creating the feature lines around the edge, typical as you would do it, and then using auto grader to create the surface. Same with the building pad right here. <clears throat> so we've created a 4% slope away at 15 feet, I think we did. I'll open that up to see. So the building pad right here. So we just said, okay, 10 feet at 4% slope away from the building outwards to come up with that. And you can do that for the front. I did that first for the front and then for the back. So I did it first for the front so we could make sure our ADA sidewalk was okay right here. So that's how that was created. So then we run a made earthwork processor for the building, assuming we would have to do a footing grade on there. And we created this in one of our previous webinars, so everything's out of date. So the building footprint right now is created. I wanted to show you this for the, um, did it by filter right here. So it's, it's actually including these right here, these uh, offset regions, which we don't want. So I can come in here and I can just tell it to exclude those. Do a refresh, do that backwards. So if I do a refresh, we get only that. So that's all that will be included in this. And we can change this again, however we want to, just like we did before. Let's make it four foot instead. And then I'll rerun it. We should get some significant cut numbers here, which we do for the building itself. So if I close that, come in here, we see that that updated. And these are just <clears throat> civil 3D label types. I can show you where that comes from too, if you don't know, in case you don't. Um, kind of handy to have because they follow the, the surface all the time. You don't have to go back and move these labels. If you're doing it in MTEX, you got to go back and pick them and move them. And that's just a simple style you create right there. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and let's make a profile for the east-west one here. I'm just going to make this one right from scratch basically using the styles, again, that we already have in the drawing. Right out of Civil 3D, as you can see. It's gonna change my surface styles here. And then we'll add the subgrade to it. No, I don't want that on there. I'll take that one off. I'm gonna leave that one on there and then we're gonna run it the other one. So we'll just create that now. And then we'll put that over here to be in line with that one. All right, I skipped a step, let's do it again. Apologize. I don't want to have that. That's ready to go. So I need to draw the profile there. It came up. 
must have hit the escape by accident. So these are the settings you would have typical to create a profile. I'm just going to go ahead and I don't need to set through it. I know that style is good. So now we have a representative of the east west and the north south. We see it comes through, hits our pond. So now we can go ahead and we can run earthwork processor again. And for this one, we don't need that building pad, so that's why I didn't add it. Again, this was created previously. So now we have two turf regions here. Oh, let me pull that off. So I can zoom to, there's one. And there's the other one. So we have these two turf regions here. And the reason I didn't include the building here, assuming that it's gonna get stripped before the building um, comes into play there. And if we had overlapping regions, we would get an error. So you cannot have overlapping regions. You cannot overlap and they cannot touch. So let me go ahead and run this. And we've set our stripping at a time. So I'll just run it. It takes a little bit here because it's creating those surfaces in the background. A lot of processing going on. So we close that. We've got our numbers here. So again, we're taking the, the total cut minus the stripping and minus our fill. So what is that? Roughly 3,000 yards off of there. So 5,000, that sounds about right. If you wanted to do the math, you could. So now that we have that again, we can add these surfaces to both profiles. I'll add it first to the east-west one to see what it looks like. Come on, grab it. So let's add those to the profile. A lot of stripping added. Subgrade added. Stripping, just changing the styles here. Subgrade, okay, okay. If you have your panorama alert turned on, it will tell you that they were added. I have it turned off right now. So there they are, right there, our surfaces coming across, so it's stripping all the way out over our pond, and the pond also was created using AutoGrader. So now let's add, let's see what the shading and the labels look like on this one. So let me open it back up again. <clears throat> I did say I was going to add it to the north-south, didn't I? I'll do it after we run with the labels and the shading. So again, that's coming from here, as we showed before, the surface creation. So I'm gonna turn this on right here, and I'm gonna, whoops, I'm gonna tell this one to use the slope analysis. I think that's the one for the subgrade. Also, I, yeah, I think it's that slope analysis. I hope that's right. Otherwise, I've got one that's made just a shade in the other one. So I'm going to select that right now and uh, set our labels. I'll go ahead and pick this one. Okay. And we do have to rerun it to make them show. It's not going to show unless we do. Oops, I want to label my individual regions right here. And all we do is shade the entire surface. So let me pull that off. 
while this run. Should see it happen. There you see it's happening in the background. So it's taking on the colors that were set in our surface creation for our depths. So we close that. Where do our labels go? So this one has uh, the surface has our drainage arrows and all of our different colorings for our depths right here that we set. So that's what's meant by the shading. So you can get your uh, surface mapping from from there. I think our labels are probably hidden underneath there. I'll run it again with the no display to show you that the labels update every time too. So you don't have to delete those, even though they're just regular M text, you don't have to delete them. So that's what we mean by dynamically updating. So we add the stripping and the subgrade again. Say so okay. So there's our surfaces. Here's what it looks like here for this one, taking off at the top of the building and then zeroing out at the ends of it. What else do I want to show? Oh, I was going to stick a label or two on here. That one didn't update for some reason. So that's no problem. We just delete them off and re add them. I don't know why that's, that's a glitch with Civil 3D. That's not our program that does that. Let me delete those off of there. Stripping surface. Okay, let me just add them back to that one. I don't know why that happens. Sometimes with Civil 3D, it just does. And I could have taken them off from the tool space as well. You can do it either place. Oops. Okay, now that we have that put back on there, I'm gonna check that. I think I want to do, uh, I think we wanna rerun that. Yeah, that's pretty deep. Let's rerun that. Maybe it will update this time. Let's set these back to more realistic numbers. Say two and 1.5. Seven five, I'll call one point five. Point five, I'm gonna rerun it. Okay. Or it updated at that time for whatever reason. Don't know the reason. So let me just show you how we add these labels, where these come from, in case you don't know. So if I just click it and I right click and I go to add labels, I go to grade breaks, I've made one just called profile name. So it's going to take the name that same pro that we use for the Profiles that shows up in your surface scene. I'm going to add this here. And I know that this goes at because I cheated. If it works right, I can just get them so I've got one on there. 
141 for that one. See if that landed right. Um, so I got two. I went too far. Let me pull one of them up. So I went too far. I can just hover here and it will tell me 139. So let me just fix that real quick. So let's say 139 here. Apply. Okay. There, it's gone. And we can do that for all of our surfaces. I'll just put one down here. Two. Hopefully this will land in the right place. Okay, there it dropped in. What it's doing is it's, the way this is set up, it's, I'm using the grade break labels. So wherever we have a grade break in here, it will show up. If you don't know where they are, you can just label them all and find out where they are. If I did this one and just told it to, to go from end to end, we would see and we could pick out a convenient place for it to land. So I'm just going to put them all on there. So if I was going to do it and I didn't know where the station was, I see I would probably want that one right there. So from 2 plus 30 to 2 plus 35, give or take. So if I just come back here and I edit this, open that boring you, 230. 235, okay, and that's the only one that stayed. So and then, like I said, these will stay there. Unless the grade break changes right here, if you do something with your surface, you don't have that one anymore. Then it won't show up, but you see how to get that on there. So let me rerun this earthwork processor again. I'm going to remove that shading from there. We're gonna, I'm going to leave the labels on. I think they're underneath there. And I could do a display order as well to see where they are. But I'm just going to take that shading off. So I'm going to pull the shading and rerun it. And it doesn't put it out of date because we're not really doing anything to the surface. So all we're doing is adding a surface style, which I left the same. I didn't take it off. So I missed a step here. Are you real quick? You see it, just put it back on there. Now I got to come back here to my surface creation. Set it to the default, no display. Just click that and it follows this. Now I say, okay, and I have to rerun it again to get it off of there. Oh, I see our labels came in super small. Not good. But that's where they go. I'm not going to fix the style. I mean, I could change it here. Driven by our scaling and the style that it is. I had created a style, I think, but I didn't push it into this drawing. But so they, there's where these things lay in. They're just regular um, M text. So if I drop it right there and I rerun it, it's not going to land there again. It's going to put it back up at the center, right? I'll show you that. So if you're expecting it like our label genie tool of work to put it back there, that, that won't happen. 
So once they're there, you have to move them all the time, which is why uh, we would probably just add them at the final. So if you watch, it's going to jump back up to this location. Well, that's wrong. I thought it did. Could have been something we fixed that I wasn't aware about, uh, aware of. So it does stay where you put it. So again, all just regular civil 3D stuff. I can pull that to a no display. Aren't you hiding? There it goes. And then two, you can see these, as I said before, whoops, you can see them showing up once they're added to your limit. You can see where they where they move. You can see where it's down at the pond right there. I turned the surface off so we can see them. And you can see it follows along here. You can see it better in this drawing over here. Let me switch back to this drawing. And I'll turn that surface off so it doesn't keep picking. So you can see in our orthogonal view here, you see these surfaces come down that have been added. Once they get added to the profile, they're going to show up over here. So that's our subgrade surface. Then we finish ground surface. And there's our existing. Okay, I think that's everything we wanted to show today. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. Right now, we'll see if we can get to them. Otherwise, I'm going to flip back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so some pretty powerful tools there. You can see how quickly, easily, you can see how things are getting done. And again, it's part of our the CTC SIM project suite of tools. Uh, we recently released our update to 24.1. So if you do have it and you are not running 24.1, you can pull up the tool and that, you know what, maybe I should just show you that real quick where you can get to that. Just in case you don't know. So if I just open up Earthwork Processor here, I should have done another tool that opens quicker, but so if we go to our about right here, we see I'm running the 24.1. If it will tell you what version you're running, if you don't have it, you just click right here to download the latest. If you don't have it and you are going to buy it, you will automatically get the latest and greatest. So if you don't have it or you need help or have ideas, you can contact us here at ctcsoftware.com or your local reseller. And that's all I have for you today. So thank you for joining us again for this final of Earthwork Processor. There will be more coming down the road in the future. So with that, if you have any questions, I will stick around for a little bit to get them. There aren't currently any there. But if you have any, go ahead and type them in and we'll try to answer them. Otherwise, that's all I have for you today. And thank you again for joining us. And we'll see you at the next webinar, hopefully. Yeah.